Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, depending on when you're watching this. I'm doing this in the afternoon, so we'll go with that. Okay, so what I'm going through here is looking at some examples of some of the different word problems out of section 1.7. Uh, you can find uh, these worked out as well in the notes for class uh, that are available. So in this problem we read that Betsy, a retired, recent retiree, requires $5,000 per year in extra income. Uh, she has $70,000 that she has available to her that she can invest uh, in two different options, B-rated bonds that pay 15% or a CD, a certificate of deposit, that pays 5%. Uh, how much money should be invested in each to realize exactly $5,000 per in interest per year? Now, you know what you think, well, why won't she just put the money in the higher interest rate one? Well, kind of key phrase there is it's B-rated bonds. Uh, they're less reliable. They have a higher rate of return, but they're less reliable. There is a chance that you might just lose some of that money and not get anything back. So she wants to reduce her risk. So ideally, she would want to put as much as possible into the 5%, but using the interest problem, if they put the full $70,000 into the 5%, that's just not going to be enough. Uh, it comes out in a one-year period to be only $3,500. So this is an uh, <clears throat> interest problem. It's kind of like a mixture problem. So I actually use the same kind of setup to do uh, most interest problems as we do mixture problems. Uh, so across each of the boxes here, I'm going to label. Uh, I have a 15% uh, interest rate on my B-rated bond, so I'm going to label that as 15%. And I have 5% on my CD, so I'm going to label that one. Now, across the top, I'm going to write how much I have, which is 70000 Now, I need 5000 in interest. There is no interest rate, although if you wanted to, you could take 5000 divided by 70000 to get an average interest rate. Uh, but there's just nothing that goes there. So now, we're only allowed to use one variable, but there's two things that we don't know. Uh, we don't know the 15%, we don't know the 5%. So a very common algebraic technique follows here, and that is I have $70,000, and I'm going to divide that up amongst two things. So if I make one part of that X, as I've done here, then we talk about what would be left. Well, we would have 70,000 minus X left. And this is a very common technique. So what we're going to do now is we can go ahead and label uh, each of the other two pieces there. Uh, is I have X dollars to put into the 15% the 15 and I have 70,000 minus X to put into the 5%. And then we just multiply down using the relationship. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Well, the time here is just one year. So we multiply down x times 0.15, and then the 70,000, and here we already have the interest, so we don't have to multiply down there. So we do that, and we'll get uh, the result that 0.15x, add it to 0.05 times 70,000 minus x equals 5,000. Uh, that is our equation, and that's really the bulk of the work in the problem, and now we just solve it. So uh, if you need to, you may want to pause it. Take a moment and solve that yourself. Uh, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly now because that's the easy part. Uh, so we multiply through. Uh, we then have some like terms there with the 0.15x and the 0.05, giving us 0.10x. And I bring the 3,500 to the other side, equals 1,500. Divide by 0.10, that's where I get 15,000. Now remember, x, as I set it up in the problem, was the amount of money at 15%. So I'm going to have to take 15 of the 70,000 and put it into the 15%. And then the other part of the question that this problem asks is how much do we put at 5%? Well, the 5% was 70,000 minus X. So we do that, 70,000 minus 15,000. We find out that there's 55,000 at 5%. Okay, hopefully this helps you as you're working through these problems.